Hello, my friend, and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to share with you why starting out in music licensing through royalty-free libraries is the best path to success in music licensing. Now, when you're getting started, you don't know much about the industry. I mean, this is my story. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what to do with the music tracks that I was composing. In fact, I didn't know exactly how to arrange, mix, or master my music in order to be placed in TV and films. I had no idea about music libraries. I searched online about all of this information and very quickly, I got overwhelmed by all of these tactics and the five-year plan and how to approach his music supervisors and how to follow them on Twitter and, and send cold emails, but don't be so pushy and, and have the music ready. Like, you know what I mean? Like all of these other tactics that I was learning in the beginning, it seemed quite intimidating for me. So I came across different royalty-free libraries back in the day, and it, it was the best decision for me as a music composer because I realized that I had full, full control of the learning process, how can I get practice, and then get some results, get some quick wins. The problem with a lot of composers when they're starting out is that the lack of wins is what prevents them from, from actually succeeding in this industry. There's so much information about uh, music licensing being like almost like a like this industry that is like Hollywood, like if you were gonna be an actor, then somehow you have to live in Hollywood and you have to, you know, get into the right, uh, have a, the right agent and, and, and be like, you know, you, you don't need to be Tom Cruise in order to become a successful uh, actor, by the way, okay? That's all I'm saying here. And it's a weird analogy, but uh, th those were my, my beliefs back then. I realized that, hey, I don't need to live in London, even though I've lived in London before <laughs> relocating here to Greece. You know, I don't need I don't need to live in a major city where where the thing is happening, right? It, that's not necessary anymore, especially with music licensing. Whether you are uh, with royalty free libraries or sync libraries or whatnot, you know, you don't need to be in a place where the music is happening. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that I can do this. Uh, without a schedule, meaning that I don't have to wait for a brief, I don't have to wait for a library to, to actually allow me to submit music or to open the doors. I mean, there's many sync libraries who which the doors are completely closed. Unless you have an email from somebody or somebody on the inside, it's impossible to just reach out to a library and say, hey, I want to submit my music to you. You know, they only work with a handful of composers. That's why a lot of uh, music licensing uh, gurus out there are talking about how great uh, music licensing is, but then they're not willing to reveal as well what type of libraries they're working with because it, you know, it's, just, it's just not common practice to say, hey, I'm working with this library, go and submit your music. I mean, I can tell you right now that because I run this YouTube channel, uh, a lot of composers are telling me uh, uh, about different libraries that they're working with especially when it comes down to sync libraries. And they tell me, please do not share that on your YouTube channel. And I understand where they're coming from because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not famous in the music licensing industry, but, you know, I, I do have a lot of videos talking about music licensing and specifically about libraries as well. And I'm not promoting libraries. I have no affiliation with any library. I'm just here as a composer saying, like, I sell my music here. And, you know, with royalty-free libraries, you can technically speaking, do that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with me saying where I sell my music. In fact, I, I take it a step further. Not only I sell my music on these libraries, but these are my income and this is how much you can make, all right? Because that's the whole point of music licensing. At least for me, when I got started, that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to be able to earn money with my music through music licensing. How am I gonna achieve that the fastest? So for me, it was music through, uh, selling my music through royalty-free libraries. So I came across this uh, list of libraries back in the day. Uh, Audio Jungle was there upon five, some other libraries, you know? And I said like, okay, I'm just gonna submit music to one. I'm gonna focus on one and see what I need, right? Like I just, an email account, have a PayPal account as well ready. I fill up some tax information, you know, because I'm selling some things online, right? I mean, I live abroad, so I have to fill up a W-8 Ben uh, tax form because uh, yeah, that's what you do. Uh, and I said to myself, okay, so the next thing is just to upload a music track. I can upload music right now. All I need to do is compose the music. So there's no resistance between <laughs> what I want to accomplish here. It's just up to me now. 
So I started to compose some music. I uploaded my first music track to a library and then it got accepted. I mean, I still remember the day I got my first track accepted. I wasn't even thinking about the sales at this point. I was just thinking of how great it is that I am part of this library and have my first music track accepted by that library. Obviously I was being very naive because nothing's gonna happen with just one track. But I was just over the moon that I, I have managed to compose a fir my first music track. I uploaded it and it just got accepted and it's up there online. Mind you, at the time I didn't know that tracks could be rejected. All I knew is that I was under review, but I just thought like, okay, they probably have to check if the description is right and that's it. But I, I never, it never occurred to me that a track could be rejected, right? Never, it never occurred to me. I uploaded my second track, my third track, and I think by the fourth track, I think it was the third or the fourth track, I got a rejection and that, that sent me on a downward spiral of, of doubt and indecision and it, it got really psychologically bad. It really affected me mentally. I'm like, there's no way that uh, one track of mine, it could get rejected. But my shock was like, I didn't know that this could happen. I wasn't aware that rejection was a thing. I guess I didn't read the instructions, right? I mean, how is it possible that someone that has all this gear, okay, guitars, I have like, 11 guitars and I have all of these things, all this knowledge, how can they reject a track by a library that is called Royalty Free Libraries? Come on, man, you know? These are not the big players after all, you know, so I was told. And, and quite quickly I realized that, you know, the level on Royalty Free Libraries is quite high. It's really high and that's back then, that's almost like 10 years ago. Now the level is just, there's really no excuse to not have high quality music and you know, I mean music tracks that I released back in the day, the first music track that was released back in the day that was accepted by this library. I mean, if you listen to it, if I, if I uploaded that right now, it will get rejected before I even upload it, you know? I mean, it, it, <laughs> the computer will probably crash. It will say like, you can't upload this shit, you know? Uh, but back then they will accept it. They accepted this type of music. And now it has been, you know, moved the bar, the standard. The bar has ra been raised so high that a lot of people struggle with this, even with royalty-free libraries. Now, a lot of people out there are saying that royalty-free libraries, the music quality doesn't have to be that good because you can just get away with it. That is not true, man. I mean, I invite you to sign up right now to these libraries and, and go through that process, you know? I mean... If you're, not, if you're new to this as well, by the way, download my free guide, link in the description. But I have a few libraries here where I'm selling my music and, and it's enough uh, of a list in order for you to get started and, and keep going, really, you know? So, uh, you know, getting rejected is part of the deal. I mean, there's just no way around the rejection. Some music is just not good for the library as well, okay? But there is a difference between the music being good and the music not being a good for the library. The mu your music could be great, but the library might not need that, all right? So it, it all comes down to knowing exactly what's happening. For me, back in the day, the music was just not good. It's not that the library did not need that. I mean, I know, and I knew back then that that music track was not good. I'm lying, I thought it was great, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, later on I realized like, well, maybe it's not my best work. And you know, I, that track is still out there for people to go and check it out. And, and you can go and check me out, listen to my music from back in the day, listen to my music now and, and see what has changed, you know, if anything, and how I'm uh, still, uh, you know, making tracks, making music, uploading to different libraries, uh, new libraries all the time, uh, working on my skills, working on my craft. And, you know, I mean, today I work not only as a composer, but as well as an educator here on this channel. I created this channel back in the day when I started to see some traction with royalty-free libraries, documenting my journey as a stay-at-home dad, making money, uh, selling music online. And, and that became a passion of mine of sharing this journey. And I wanted to put my, the flag in the sand, so to speak, in the music licensing uh, space and say like, you know what, all of these guys are talking about exclusive libraries and sync libraries and how to do this and how to do that. Nobody's really talking about royalty-free libraries. And why are they great? place to start as a music licensing composer. And throughout the years, a lot of things have happened with these libraries. Like now you can accept, you can, they accept PRO registered music. 
I mean, before this was like a no-no, and now this have moved to that, right? So now if you're a composer who happens to be affiliated with a PRO like BMI or ASCAP or whatever, you can technically uh, sell your music there that is registered, man. I mean, that's mind-blowing, right? Back in the day, this did not exist at all. Um, you know, we have seen uh, content ID as well, okay? You can protect your music, fingerprint it. So if somebody's going to take that track and whack them in the YouTube video, you know, it's a way that you can track it and get your money like that. That's amazing, man, right? Uh, subscriptions. Subscription is another evolution of the music licensing, the royalty-free licensing uh, industry, right? The sync libraries work in a different way. And I've spoken about this before, but royalty-free libraries like Artless, Motion Array, uh, Audio Jungle. Well, Audio Jungle has Envato Elements, which is a sus subscription uh, thing that they have in place. Upon five, all libraries, you know, even libraries who want to separate themselves from the royalty-free model, uh, but they have a subscription in place, they are royalty-free libraries. That's it, full stop, okay? Uh, Artless, for example high quality library, okay? But they have a subscription in place, a motion array as well, which is part of Artless. Um, Music Vine, I believe, it has another subscription library. I mean, I've spoken about this. All of these libraries who are boutique libraries, but at the end of the day, they're royalty-free libraries. They're not just a sync exclusive library. Uh, you know, it's, it's aim for all content creators and even TV producers and even supervisors that are looking for, for music to actually uh, get their music in different ways. It's part of the industry, all right? It's a different model that is out there. So, but if you're getting started, you, you must be able to do something today, right? Not in five years time. Not build relationship with some, some A&R and then maybe submit some music and then fingers crossed, hopefully you get something, right? $300 for an upfront uh, sync fee and then in the hopes, and, and as well, you're gonna get some royalties, obviously with performing royalties at some point. Yes, you can't pay the bills with that, okay? But $300, $400 with an upfront uh, sync fee, that's what I make with a library alone. And that's making it really bad, okay? With a library that's not performing very, very well, okay? And it's an ongoing process of like, hey, three, $400 with one library that is just some music there. You know, that's quite a good deal if you ask me. Uh, but it's the best way to get started because you can get practice beyond the money and beyond the income, okay, which is the purpose of this channel. I started this channel just to document my journey of how I make money selling music online. That's it. And how can I help others? Uh, with royalty-free music, by the way, not streaming, not sync libraries, not in any other way, just with royalty-free libraries like the ones that I mentioned in my guide. So if you cannot get practice like this or to put it in a better perspective, it's the best way to get practice by selling your music on royalty-free libraries because you can practice on your craft, you can get better at your craft, you can upload, I mean, publish music. There's just no limit. I mean, some libraries have some limit, like you can only you know, upload 30 tracks or 20 tracks when, at any given point, uh, but there's no limit. You have, the doors are open. Once you upload your music and they're like, hey, what's up, you're, you're good to go, upload some music, then it's just up to you. And then it's just a process of getting reviewed and getting rejected or accepted. And actually getting rejected is a good thing because you can learn from that process. At one time I got 10 tracks rejected and they told me like, I asked for a feedback, like why, what's the problem? These tracks are already selling in another library. And they told me like, I don't need another, you know, corporate track or I don't need another rock track. I need this type of music. So there's always something to, to learn. Uh, it's by far the best way to just get started and even carry on uh, as you pursue your own music licensing career, okay? Uh, in my opinion, I'm gonna share more about my journey of how I do this um, and, and how I'm working as a full-time composer. Well, not even a full-time composer, I do this part-time now because I do YouTube videos, I'm an educator, I run a separate business as well, but I'm gonna share more of my journey with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my, to my channel and I'll see you in another video, my friend.